All right, all these graphing problems are non-calculator. We have y equals 2x minus 3. Since the degree is 1, we know that it's going to be linear, so it's going to make a line when I'm done. Um, if you recall, the number that's not attached to the x is going to be the y-intercept, and the number that it is attached to the x is going to be the slope. So I'm going to start with the y-intercept of negative 3, so I'm going to go down on the y-axis at negative 3 and put a point. And then since my slope is 2, that's actually 2 over 1, so from the negative 3 I'm going to rise 2 and run 1. So then I'm just going to connect those two points, and I have my line with arrows on the ends, of course. All right, the next one, if I'm looking at the x, it again is a degree of 1, so I know that it's going to be a line when I graph it. Um, on this one, I would like it to say y equals, so the first thing that I'm going to do is actually subtract 5x from both sides, so I'm going to get 3y equals 9 minus 5x, and then I'm going to divide all three parts by 3, so I'm going to get y equals 3 minus 5 thirds x. All right, um, the part that's not, that does not have the x on it is the 3, so that means it's going to touch, the line is going to touch the x-axis at 3. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, right there. Oops. And then um, from here, since the slope is negative 5 thirds, I'm going to go down 5 and then over 3. And then put a point. And then I'm going to connect those two points. Whoops. Could have put our line there put arrows on the end, and voila, I've got my line again. Okay, this one is absolute value, so now I know when I'm done graphing it, it's going to look like a V. I know what's going to happen. This plus 3 is going to force me to go to the left 3 because we do the opposite. And then the minus 1 is going to force me to go down 1. So starting at 0, 0, I'm going to go to the left 3 and then down 1 and put a point. So my vertex, which we'll want to get in the habit of labeling, my vertex is going to be at negative 3, negative 1. Okay, then from here, this negative 2 is going to be the slope of my absolute value. So from here, I'm going to go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. Okay, um, since it is absolute value, I know that I have to do the same thing in the other direction. So I'm going to go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, and from there, I do have my V-shaping figure. There we go, with arrows on it, of course. Okay, and then this last absolute value one, again, it's absolute value, so I know it's going to look like a V. This one, since there's nothing inside of with the X, I'm going to stay put. So stay put. And then this plus 4 is going to make me go up 4. So I'm going to stay put and then go up 4. I'll put a point, which means my vertex is going to be at 0, 4. Okay, and then from here, my slope is a negative 1, so I'm going to go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, and then do the same thing on the other side since it's an absolute value, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. So if I graph it, it should look something like that. All right, more graphs. We have y equals 1 half to the x. This is an exponential function. Just because of the nature of it, we've got something to a power on this one. There's nothing out here, which means the graph is going to touch at 1. And the 1 half, since it is less than 1, my graph is going to decay instead of grow. So I'm going to try to draw a nice smooth exponential curve here. And it's just going to keep getting smaller and smaller. So your graph should look something like that. All right, this one says to actually choose the exponential function that fits the graph. So I notice that this one is touching up at 2. So it has to be this one, basically, because it starts at 2. So it has to be 2 times, and it's 4 to the x because it is increasing exponentially, and this number is bigger than 1. So it's going to be choice B. The reason that it's not choice C is because the 1 fourth is smaller than 1, so the graph would actually be going the other way. And it's not going to be choice D because choice D would give me the equation of a line. All right, this next one, um, since it's a squared, I know it's going to take the shape of a parabola, parabola or a U-shaped. Um, first thing that I'm going to do is to get the vertex on this one. So to get the vertex, we're going to go to the left one and then down two, just like we do for absolute value. So going to the left one and down two will put me right there. And I'm going to label that vertex. The vertex is negative one, negative two. And then from here, we're going to do a zero point. If you remember to get the zero point, we're going to plug in zero. Zero plus one is one. One squared is one. One times negative three is negative three. Negative three minus two is negative five. So I'm going to go to zero, negative five, which is down there. And then if you want to draw your line of symmetry, sometimes that's helpful. So I know I'm going to be going this way like that. And then I'm going to mirror it over on the other side. And then we've got our parabola. And we do want to try to make it a nice smooth curve right there. 
Okay, this last one, number eight, I do know again that it's going to be a parabola because of the squared. I would like to get it in vertex form, so I am going to complete the square on this one. So I'm going to have x squared plus 4x, whoops, leave a blank, minus 2. Okay, remember we're going to take the 4, we'll divide it by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. I'll square it and I'll get plus 4. And so if I have plus 4 on the inside, I have to put minus 4 on the outside. So I'm going to have y equals, and if you'll remember, um, I put inside whatever I had when I divided by 2, so I'm going to get x plus 2 squared minus 6. So my vertex, to get my vertex, I'm going to go to the left 2 and down 6. So my vertex will be at negative 2, negative 6. And then once again, we can find our 0 point. Um, we can plug 0 in. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. So my 0 point is at 0, negative 2. So if I draw my line of symmetry, it's going to, go, going to be going up like that. And then I'll just mirror it over on the other side. And we've got our parabola.